Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're going to set up the functionality to be able to save a run in our database. So first of all, we have to think about what do we actually need to do to be able to save a run in our database, because we already have the function that inserts run in the database. But what we don't have yet are all those different values for a specific run that we want to save with that one in the database. So when the user hits that finish run button, then we somehow need to get the distance of that run, we need to get the, the average speed, we need to get the image of that run. So we want to have a bitmap of the map and every single point, every single polyline should be fully visible on that image. So nothing should be cut off so the user can see his whole run in the run fragment. And that is also what I want to worry about first in this video. We are going to write a function that basically zooms out as much as needed that we can fully see everything of our run. Let's do this a little bit below here. Here where we do that polyline stuff is pretty good, I think. That will be a private function, zoom to see whole track. I think it's pretty self-explanatory what that does. And for that type of functionality, Google Maps has a let long bounds object, which will do exactly what we want here. So we just put in all of our coordinates, all of our let long coordinates, and Google Maps will do the rest and give us the final bounds to which we want to zoom. So first of all, we want to define that bounds object. Well, bounds is equal to let long bounds dot builder. And afterwards, we are just going to have two for loops one for loop to loop through our path points list, so through all of our polylines. So for each polyline in path points, and then for each, let's call it position in polyline, so just for each light long coordinate, we want to call our bounds object and include that lat long coordinate, so we simply pass position here. And then we can move our map camera so our google map here make that null check and call move camera this time it's really important not to choose animate camera because we will move that camera and it will immediately do that it will calculate that bounce and it will immediately zoom out and that is very important because we want to make a screenshot of that map afterwards and if we are animating that map then that animation takes some time and then we will make the screenshot right afterwards where we didn't even completely zoomed out so in here we're going to pass a camera update factory dot new lat long bounds this time and that will take our bounds object so we just pass bounds dot build then it wants the width and the height of our map view. So first of all, map view dot width and map view dot height. And then it wants a padding by us. What is the padding? Well, it's nothing different than the padding in XML. It will just push a little the, the running track in the middle of the map so that the most outer coordinates are not directly on the border of our map view. So just to make sure everything looks good. And for that, I want to make a little calculation here with our map view dot height and multiply that by 0 0.05 and convert that to an integer. The next function is going to be a private function and run and save to db, which is also pretty self-explanatory. So inside of this function, we're just going to get all the necessary values for a specific run. We will also make the screenshot of our um, of our map and then basically save that run with all its values in the database afterwards. And at this point, we already assume that we called this zoom to whole track function before so that we're now ready to make that screenshot. And that is very easy to do. Just call our map object or a Google map, make that null check and call snapshot on that. And here you can see that snapshot gives us the bitmap as a result. We can call that bitmap here and then we have it and can easily save that in our database. And now we have to calculate the total distance of our run first. How do we want to do that? Well, we have to loop through our um, polyline list. So for each single polyline, we need to calculate the distance. 
And to do that, I want to create a utility function inside of our tracking utility class. Let's open that. Let's do it here. Um, and that's going to be a pr um, not a private function, just a function called calculate polyline distance or polyline length actually. And that's going to take a parameter polyline and really make sure to choose our own polyline type here, not that Google Maps polyline type. If you quite remember, in our tracking service, we had that, yeah, here, that type alias polyline, which is nothing different than a mutable list of let long coordinates. And that's the type I want to use here. I could also replace that polyline type here with mutable list of let long, but I think like that, it's a little bit more readable. On that function, of course, needs to return a float here. So just the total distance of that polyline. Then we're going to have a var distance, which is set to zero f initially. And now we want to loop through the positions of our polyline. And we're going to need the indices for that. So we are going to choose for i in the range 0 to polyline dot size minus 2. And why I choose minus 2, I will explain in a sec. Because now we want to get the first position by writing polyline at the index of i and the let's actually call this position one and now position two which is polyline at the index of i plus one and that's the reason why we have that minus two here because for the highest index possible that would be i minus one and if we add up that that one to that then that would be an invalid index and this would basically crash. This is why we need to subtract two here and not only one. So all we do here is we are going to loop through our polyline and comparing each two coordinates that belong together. Then we're going to have a function or we are going to call a function from the location class location dot distance between which is exactly what we want that will calculate the distance between two let long coordinates. First of all, that's going to take the start latitude, which is position one dot latitude. Then we pass position one dot longitude. Now the second coordinate, position two dot latitude, position two dot longitude. And we have to specify a results array because I guess there could be some more information about the distance between two coordinates. But for us, only the, the absolute distance matters but we still need to specify that results array in which the result will be saved. So just val result is equal to new float away of the size one. Then we're going to pass that result here and then we can access the result of that distance between function on the zeroth index of that result array. So now after we know that result, we simply want to add that result to our total distance. So distance plus equals result at the index of zero. And at the end of our function outside of the for loop, we're just going to return our distance. And then we're going to go back to our tracking fragment. Instead of this and run and safety b function, we're going to have our var distance in meters, set that to zero initially. Then we're going to loop through our path points list. So for each polyline in path points, we are going to add up on that distance in meters. So distance in meters plus equals tracking utility, tracking utility dot calculate polyline length. Here we need to pass our polyline and then simply convert that to an integer. And after that for loop, we know we have the total distance saved in our distance in meters. And because now we know that distance and we also know the total time run, we can calculate the average speed of the user. So val average speed, and that will be the average speed in kilometers per hour. For that, we are going to need to use our distance in meters, divide that by a thousand F because we want to have it in kilometers and multiply it or actually divide it, not multiply it by our current time in millis, which we now need to convert to hours. So we divide that by a thousand to get it in seconds, divide that by 60 to get it in minutes and divide it by 60 again to get it in hours. 
and actually we only want to display a single decimal place for that average speed so that the text doesn't get too long in our recycler view and to accomplish that we can use the round function round from coughlin.math here put everything around parentheses here and multiply it by 10 and after that round block we divide it by 10f again so what this will accomplish it it will calculate the result so our average speed that is our average speed then it will multiply that average speed by 10 it will round that average speed so it won't have any decimal places and then it will divide that by 10 again so we have that decimal place but this time only a single one next we can save the current date timestamp so val date time stamp which we're going to set to calendar dot get instance dot time in millis so as you probably remember we save the date of the run in milliseconds so we can easily convert that to a date format we want and then we need to calculate the calories burned so val calories burned for which i will choose a formula i found in the internet i don't know how accurate that is but for me personally it seemed pretty realistic I tried it out once and that's going to be our distance in meters divided by a thousand so we get it in kilometers and then multiply that by the weight which we don't have yet let's actually make that weight variable up here in our tracking fragment for now we only set it to 80 private var weight is equal to 80f because we don't have the functionality yet that the user can enter his own age and that that gets saved to. So for now we are only getting that default value of the weight, but we will implement the rest later. So now it knows that weight and I personally don't want the calories to have decimal places. So what we will do is we will convert that whole block to an integer here. And now we have everything we need to construct our run object so we can use val run is equal to new run then we have to pass the bitmap first which is just the bitmap here we need to pass the timestamp which is the date timestamp here and then we have to pass the average speed for which we'll pass average speed the distance in meters is distance in meters the time in milliseconds is the duration of the run here we will pass current time in millis and the calories burned are just calories burned. And since we don't have a function yet in our, in our view model to insert a run, let's quickly do that. Go inside of our UI package and view models and main view model. In here, I will just create a function insert run, which will take a run, which we will insert, of course and set that equal to a view model scope so we'll launch a coroutine here and we are just going to call our main repository and call insert run and pass our run here then we can go back to our tracking fragment and call our view model dot insert run and pass our just created run here and then we can finally also show a snack bar to tell the user that the run was saved snack bar dot make for the view, we are going to pass require activity dot find view by id r dot id dot root view. Why I do that is because we're inside of a fragment and right after we call that end run and save to db function, we are going to navigate back to our run fragment. And if we choose a view from our fragment, then it will basically crash because the snack bar will keep displaying even after navigation and if we pass the view that doesn't exist anymore, then it's going to crash. So that's why we need to pass the root view of our activity here. Then for the text, we just write run saved successfully. And we're going to choose snack bar, oops, snack bar dot length long and call that show afterwards. And finally, after we save a run, we want to stop the run. So we want to stop our service, we want to reset all the variables and all that stuff. So now if we scroll up to our onViewCreated function here, 
we can use our button finish run and set an on-click listener to that. And here we just want to call zoom to see whole track. And right after that, we're going to save and run and save to DB. And that's basically it. And then we can try it our app and see if everything is working. Open our emulator here and our emulator options to simulate that route. I'm going to um, click on play route, click on continue here, start a new run, click on start, and then our route will start just as usual. Let's wait a little, click on stop, let's resume it. And after our player ran a little bit, let's click on stop, click on finish run, and you can see that run was saved successfully in our database. It zoomed in on the image, but right now we can't display it, of course, because we haven't set up our recycler view. I hope this video taught you something new. If so, please let me know below in the comments. And also, if you have any questions, then I really don't mind to ask them below. And have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.